Hello, welcome. Uh, so what I'd like to show you in this video is uh, the first video in our series in regard to uh, creating a door for our project in uh, week number two. And this uh, project is about, uh, well, it's about creating a door, a stylish door. What you don't have to do is go through the effort that you see in the screen right here, but this is stri strictly for demonstration. And what I'd like to show you is how to get basic door dimensions. So if all we had to do was deal with that wooden door and nothing else, this is how you would do it, and this is where these dimensions come from. So we're talking about a basic 36 by 80 inch door. It's a door that's uh, typical with a, just a basic exterior door, one of the more common ones. And I'll, let me show you what some of those dimensions mean. So right now I have a lot of uh, reference geometry in, in here. I use this reference geometry in order to provide symmetry for the door because the door is uh, symmetrical about a uh, vertical plane right down the middle of the door as well as various planes uh, horizontally within the door so that uh, you know we can create some stylish elements in there like um, you know, panels in the middle of the door and uh, that would uh, help complete this uh, project. So let's do this. Let's turn off those, uh, those sketches. If you go up to view scroll down here to sketches we're going to turn those off and it kind of looks a little bit better the only stylish element I have in my door here which is just a basic rectangular extrude mid-plane of course so it's important to do a mid-plane extrude especially when we're going to be doing some uh, features uh, and we're going to marry marrying those features uh, the only stylish element I have in the store is a vertical grain pattern and there's a video that explains how to do that that's more typical, you see that more than uh, the other way. It, uh, it provides a little bit more strength in the door, especially if it were a solid door, if you had something like that. So, let's talk about this. What I have is a couple different components in this assembly. I have a walls floor component, I have a door jam component, and as I click on this, you'll see it's lighting up in blue. And I have a pre-selection over here in orange, and then I have my door. All three of these elements kind of go into this illustration. So if we were to turn this back around and look out from the inside of the door, inside of the house and take a look at that door you'll notice that you have a couple different things going on here and you have a lot of gaps here too so basically what you have is a 36 inch door the jam is going to be a little bit bigger than that and then the rough door opening is going to be even bigger than that so the reason why you have a rough door opening is uh, typically when you put uh, lumber together and you're building a house it's difficult to really get it really close and get a real tight uh, tolerance in here you give yourself a lot of room so you can uh, hang your door in there correctly, as I call it. In regard to hanging the door, you want to make sure that the door hinges, the hinge side of the door is uh, as close to vertical as you can. If it's not vertical, if it's not square to the jam, and the jam's not square to the rough opening, then your door is going to kind of have a mind of its own and kind of open and shut. And uh, you know, I'm certain we've all seen doors like that where you open the door and it ends up swinging open, or when the door is open, it likes to swing shut. And that's because uh, things aren't lined up correctly. So in regard to construction, what they do is they provide a lot of room in here and it gives you the ability to actually square up the hinge side of the door and then square up all the other components associated with that door afterwards considering that the door is uh, square to begin with. So we start with a rough opening and if we take a measurement tool, if we go to the evaluate button, go to the measure function up here, what we can do is click on that face over here and this face over here and it gives you an idea what for a 36 inch door what a typical, as I measured it, uh, what a typical uh, rough door opening is going to be. So it's actually pretty big, it's 38 and a half inches. But it does provide uh, a lot of room for uh, putting shims in there because, you know, the lumber isn't perfect. It's got uh, knots in it, it uh, they warp sometimes. And uh, steel, uh, you know, steel studs might be a little bit better. But uh, you still have variations when it comes to constructions and uh, construction, and that's something you have to take in consideration. If you want to take your measure tool and measure something else, rather than do an escape and getting you out of that tool, if you just click in the middle of nowhere, it gives you the ability to reselect a couple different items. So between the rough opening and the door jam itself, it's about a half an inch. So I have a, have a half an inch near the side. That's pretty generous. I've seen it as low as a quarter of an inch. But remember, you have about a little over 36 inches or not 36 inches but uh, a little bit over 7 feet uh, to get all that door in there or not over 7 feet but it's close to 7 feet so over a 7 foot run you want to make sure that with a bow in the wood or with a knot in there or a twist in there that you do have plenty of room so let's do this let's take our door escape a couple times let's uh, hide that if you go to hide components the third element over here when you're in an assembly and let's take a look at what an actual door measurement is so if we go back to the measure tool, we're going to click on this face, whoop, measure tool, click on this face, 
and this face, and this is the actual opening or the actual measurement of the door. So if you have a 36 inch door, what that means is that here between the door jam, it's 36 inches. Now the door is going to be less than that, but uh, that's the opening of the door. It doesn't mean you can actually walk through with uh, through that door with something that's 36 inches wide, because you're going to come into the door stop over here, which is going to be less than that. And I believe the door stop is one inch less, so it's a half an inch on either side. So that's the actual clearance of the door. So the other measurement on the door should be 38 inches. Let's just clear, uh, click out here in the middle of nowhere so we can uh, clear our selections. And this one's going to be 8 inches. So if we go from the floor up to the top of the gym, that should be 80 inches. So those are the basic, basic measurements of the door. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. I'll cover a little bit more in the next video and then we'll get started on the doors.